You're listening to the Odo Show Podcast, your source for real cleaning talk and tips. Presented by Odoban, the original odor eliminator since 1980. Here are your hosts, Val and Dave. What's up, everybody? We have got the top five fall cleaning tips for you this week. You know what means fall to a lot of people? Pumpkin spice, spice lattes. Everything's pumpkin spice yep. right now. It's kind of a, it's become almost a joke. There's, you know, pumpkin spice cookies and, and creamers. And I even saw pumpkin spice potato chips the other day. You are kidding. I'm not kidding. There's a sign on a store here in town. They're doing pumpkin spice oil changes. Now you are kidding. Now I'm kidding. Oh, please so, be kidding. You know, it's such a big trend. We can't miss out on this. Mm-mm. So uh, we want to take a minute and introduce something that's kind of a big deal for us. It is something that is going to make your fall, your autumn, the best it's ever been. Your home is going to be great. We are talking about Pumpkin Spice Odoban. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. This lovely product disinfects your vampires, sanitizes your werewolves, freshens every ghost in your home, and not only that, it tastes great on Thanksgiving dinner and the turkey and the dressing. Okay, it's getting deep in here. Yeah, okay, we're just kidding. There's there's no Pumpkin Spice Odoban. We just kind of thought it was funny. It's, it's really hard to get stuff like this through the whole registration process. So we're starting to get some fall decorations out, uh, and we're talking about fall cleaning. Right. So everybody does spring cleaning, right? Uh, does anybody out there do fall cleaning? Do you hit this every six months, kind of deep clean? Yep. Yeah, how about you? I, I clean in the fall, <laughs> but I do. I mean, I don't probably do as hard of a deep clean as I should. Well, sure. But but yeah, I mean, I do, you know, and, and there's there's certain things that you'll do in the fall, you know, to kind of get ready for the cool weather. And, and so right. if you guys don't necessarily, but feel like you should and you want to get on board with that well we went out on the internet and we were looking at different things you know different types of um checklists or you know any kind of yeah there's hints, a ton of hacks. stuff out there if, if you need a place to start you get out on the internet and look around there's checklists there's hacks there's lists of things you can do and all of it focuses like Val was saying on sort of the time you know the season change temperatures right. are changing you're going to be spending more time indoors so we got a whole list of stuff to look at here and we're trying to give you kind of the highlights of this right the interesting thing that i found you know there's lots of cleaning checklists but I also found a purge checklist, which is another good thing that oh, you don't yeah. think about doing. And that's basically, you know, going through your linen closets, going through, you know, different parts of your house and getting rid of things that either are mismatched or, you know, just, just worn out, yep, yep, things yep. you don't use. Um, or actually, if, if you need to, if you're, you know, tight on space for certain things, you know, you can go from the summer to the to the winter, you know, switch that out like you do with your clothes closet. Yeah, and it's a great time of the year to donate some of these things to, to people that might need them for the upcoming holidays that they don't have access to. That's right, and it also is a good time to go ahead and get that done so that, you know, for your taxes, you've got those write-offs already taken good care of. Good point. Yep. You know, we've got lists here for outside the home and inside the home. Uh, but, you know, stuff varies place to place. You know, what you're going to be doing depends on your house and your situation. Right. We're not going to be putting, like, chains on our tires for snow no, down here. No, not so much. So, you know, I mean, a lot of these are kind of geared towards, you know, everybody. So, you know, you can do it one of two ways. You can either go ahead and, and just look at these and make your own. Or, like me, it makes me feel like I've, uh, you know, accomplished a few things. Anything that I know does not apply, I go ahead and put a check. Just check off. check off the stuff that doesn't apply <laughs> to you. Look at me go. I, like I got half done. You know, the thing about it is you really have to uh, look at these and sort of assess, uh, does this apply to me, and does it make sense? You know, some of the things we found here... I'm going to quite classify them as cleaning fails. Now, we've talked about these in the past, things that you don't really want to do. We try to give you the real information. Then here's one that stood out to me on these lists. Things you didn't know you could put in the dishwasher, but you can. So they're talking about cleaning stuff here in your dishwasher that's not that, dishes. This is not good. Okay, so let's start with the kitchen garbage can. Who's Do you guys... I can't fit a kitchen garbage can in my dishwasher. I mean, even if you take the even racks out. Even if you out, could. Even if you could. Why would you would want you? to? Would you? You take that outside and wash it. Don't wash that with your dishes. Yeah, yeah. I'm, it's I'm, just wrong. I'm ready to take that thing out when it smells anyway. Yeah. So. so, okay. And the next one here, broom and dustpan. I guess they're talking about taking the head off the broom to put in the dishwasher. I don't get that. Oh, yeah. Here's my favorite, though. Your flip-flops and your Crocs. You can wash your shoes in the dishwasher. People... Don't wash your shoes in the dishwasher. Why would you do that? Look, if you need, if you think you're going to put your flip-flops and your Crocs in where your dishes are washed, 
uh, I mean, really, you might need to reassess your life choices. No, no, I'm no, just no, saying no. that's not the best plan. But you know, they, the, the other thing too is you know, there's always comments on you know these online posts and whatnot. And this one lady on here had said that she puts her son's potty chair in the dishwasher. Oh, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. No yeah. potty she chairs, does. <laughs> guys. Uh, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, again, if you're doing that, please reassess your life choices. Well, Think about what you're doing. Well, also, I mean, you know, she says in her defense, she says that she doesn't put dishes in with it, thankfully. I would hope not. She also doesn't tell her family that she does it. Yeah, no kidding. And then she runs a, a clean cycle afterwards. But, I don't care. Uh -uh. I'm not, don't, don't wash the poop chair where you wash your dishes, no. people. That's just not right. Do you guys no. wash something besides dishes in your dishwasher? Is that going on? I, I mean... I don't know. There might be some things out there that'd be okay. You know, plastic stove knobs. Yeah, the, the stove knobs. Those in once um, in a while. Yeah, the ceiling fan, the the the, the light fixtures, the oh, globes. Oh, you know, that's an interesting idea. It is. Do you put guys put anything on in your dishwasher? You know what? That actually leads into my first fall cleaning tip: mm -hmm. ceiling fans. Now, this is stuff that sort of caught our eye. That is is unique to fall, or or maybe isn't something you think about. So, do you guys have ceiling fans at home? I've got ceiling fans in every room of the house. I mean, maybe it's, it's a, a southern staple down here. Yeah, maybe it's a southern thing, but in the summertime, you got to have them on for the AC, and then in the wintertime, you switch the direction of the fan so they blow the hot air down, mm -hmm. right? Well, and if you haven't dusted in a while and you reverse the direction, man, it throws dust all over your house. Yeah. So here's your first tip to clean the dust off of them without getting it everywhere. Take an old pillowcase. Maybe you found it in your uh, in your pur on your purge checklist. Ah, that's a Take an old pillowcase, slide it over the blade, and just rake all the dust off into the pillowcase. And, oh, that's Catches genius. it all. That is a good you idea. You just go blade to blade and you're good to go. Now, personally, I don't want to climb a, a, a ladder to get up to my ceiling fans. So I've got one of those long poles with the loop on the top and all the little fuzzies and whiskers. Yeah. Yeah, you just, you know, slide it up and down the blade, grabs all the dust. The trick is you need to have your vacuum cleaner right there. And it works. And then vacuum all the dust off. That I'm works great. And you just yeah. work your way I'm room to room. I'm gonna have that one. <laughs> Kathleen says it's called a dishwasher for a reason. You Amen. are dead right. Amen. Uh, yep. So the holidays are coming up mm -hmm. and you're gonna probably be cooking. Right. You know, for the holidays. Either you're entertaining and having people over or oh, yeah, maybe yeah, you're yeah. you know you're going to somebody's house but you gotta bring a dish. Yeah. Go ahead and go through your pantry, you know, put that on your purge list and get rid of things that have expired. You know, Excellent it's so idea. easy to let staples that are in there that you'd maybe not use a whole lot yeah. to expire. Guilty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're looking at like yeasts and, and baking powder, things like that. Yeah. And you wanna make sure that you have that on hand. You know, you don't wanna wait until, you know, the grocery stores are closed and then you're stuck and you gotta come up with a plan B. Yeah, I always do that. I'll go to the grocery stores, I'll be doing all my shopping for the big Thanksgiving meal or something and I'll think, oh, baking powder. Oh, oh, I don't think I've got baking powder because. I haven't seen it in, you know, 12 months since last Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'll buy some more and I get home and I've got like 12 cans of the stuff in the in the pantry. And it's, you just go ahead and get rid of all of those. And I'll bet that if you went in there right now, you'd find that they're all expired. Yeah, they? they probably aren't there. And that stuffing's been there for three years. And it's a good time to clean all that out. So now I have room to actually put the stuff that I want to serve Very in smart. there. Very yeah, smart. Speaking yeah, yeah. of serving too, your serving dishes. You want to be able Ooh. to, you know, you know, want to take yeah. an assessment and find out where they are that, you know, you can put your hands on them come time because there's nothing like, you know, getting ready to serve the turkey and you don't have a platter. Yeah, I you speak know. from experience. You know, if you serve your turkey on a paper platter, <laughs> Aunt Marple is gonna write about that in her blog and she's gonna trash you on the family Facebook group and you might even make the uh, Christmas newsletter. You don't wanna do that. <laughs> no, you don't wanna be there. You don't wanna be that. <laughs> so you guys planning the big Thanksgiving feast, you got people coming over and, and assuming that you've got family coming in for the holidays, uh, when do you start cleaning? How early do you start? Do you start now? Do you wait a little later? You know, what's the plan there? Cause, because my uh, third tip here has to do with planning ahead for those big family get-togethers. Very good. Now, one of the things uh, people like to do is, of course, get their carpet cleaned before the family comes over, right? And uh, the trick is, this is the best time of the year 
to clean your carpet. Now, why is that? Because the humidity is lower in most of the country. The air is dry, which means when you have the carpet cleaned or you clean it yourself, it dries quicker. Now, we've said before, dry carpet is happy carpet. That, yeah. that drying step is one of the most important ones for cleaning carpet. So right. this is a great time, not only that, in a lot of the country, it's nice enough weather. You can open the windows, air the house out, and uh, that helps the carpet dry faster. Right. So right. It's, a, it's a great time to clean carpet, not only that, but if you do it now, you don't get mixed up in the scheduling issues with all those people that wait to the week right before Thanksgiving to try to get the carpet clean before the family comes over. You can go ahead and get it taken care of and uh, get it out of the way. So that's my tip is fall weather is carpet cleaning weather. It is a stress-free tip. So scented candles, let's talk about right. those. For me, I don't I don't tend to burn candles in the summertime as much. Um, it's more of a, you know, cooler air, fall, Makes sense to that me. kind of thing. And that, that really gets me into the mood for fall too. But there again, that's a habit you have to get into mm -hmm. of remembering to blow out those candles. Yep. You want to make sure that you do that. You don't want, when you're cleaning, you don't want to be spraying around those open flames either. That's a good point. You know, there are a lot of cleaners out there that are flammable, not ours so much, but especially things in spray cans. Man, if you get those around an open flame with a candle, you can burn your house down. So always be careful with the scented candles right. and cleaning products. It's a bad combination a lot of times. Right. And if you are like me and you can't remember certain things sometimes, help yourself out. You know, if you want to make sure that you get those candles put out, put either a note next to your nightstand or maybe on the light switch or someplace to blow out those candles before you go to bed. And then in the morning or whenever you're going to leave the house at any time of the day, Make sure put something out. there on the on the door. I tell you, my wife loves to put candles up on the mantel, you know, if we're hanging out watching movies mm, or something. Yeah. It's real nice. But uh, I, more than once I have uh, got, got out of bed the next morning and, and look at the living room and it's like, why, why is the living room flickering and bright? It's like, oh, there are still candles burning. Guilty, guilty. So we have completely switched yeah. to LED candles. We don't do a lot of flame anymore. Just LEDs. And They're they beautiful. look nice. They, look they do. They look really nice. Look but great. for me, I'm missing out on the scent. I'm missing out on the smells and everything. So for me, my way of you know being a little bit safer about things is I'll get one of those wax melters. Now for me, you know, you can get the really beautiful ones mm -hmm, for fifteen dollars mm -hmm. or, or higher, depending on where you go. But for me, I'll just get the one that looks like, you know, it's one of those mug warmers that you plug in. It's like five bucks at Walmart. So yep. You know, no frills. You know, another so thing, talking about safety tips, is, uh, you know, candles and dark. The time change is coming up. Yep. Well, yep. time change is always when you change the batteries in your smoke detectors and, and your carbon monoxide yes. detector. So yes, go ahead and change the batteries out. That way you know you, you've got your family's safety well in hand. All right, talking about decorations, anything? that's going to be my, my fifth tip here. My, my final sort of bonus tip is, do you guys carve a pumpkin? You got a jack o lantern going out on the... Out on the front porch, have you carved a pumpkin yet? I haven't carved it yet, but I'm excited for Halloween. You know, it's only, what, October 3rd yeah. in Georgia. You don't carve your pumpkin yet because you put it out on the front porch. It's just going to be pumpkin pie. It's so hot, soup. right? It's soup. It's going to be you'll, soup. You'll make pumpkin soup. So yeah. here are some tips. If you want to put one out, first of all, wait a little bit later. But I've got some ideas here that are going to help you preserve that jack-o'-lantern, make it last as long as possible. So go ahead and carve your pumpkin. Get it all carved out. Number one, scrape out as much of that stuff inside as you can. All the gook and the strings and the seeds, get as all of that out as you can. And roast those seeds. Roast They're the yummy. seeds. They're delicious. So once you get it all cleaned out and carved, you want to find a container that you can submerge this pumpkin in, fill it up with water, and add one tablespoon of bleach per gallon of water. Only one tablespoon? One tablespoon of bleach wow. per gallon. So you've okay. got three gallons of water, you want three tablespoons of bleach. Do now, you've heard me say in the past, bleach is not a cleaner. And that's true, but it does have some things where it actually works really well, and this is one of them. You want to take that bleach water, submerge your cut pumpkin in it, and leave it for at least two minutes. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to fight rot on your pumpkin. It gets rid of all the mold spores. It takes care of all the organisms that are going to try to break that pumpkin down when you set it out. So once you let it soak, pull it out, let it dry well. Now, once it's dried good, you've got to combat the other problem that, that damages pumpkins, and that's them drying out, sitting outside. You've cut all the uh, the edges on this thing. And then you get a shrunken head. Yeah, you get the shrunken head. They just kind of collapse down on themselves. So uh, put some olive oil or vegetable oil in a spray bottle, mist the inside of the pumpkin and all the cut edges, and then let that dry before you set it out. So uh, you can save that bleach water, put it in a spray bottle, label it like a good chemist, safety first, and then once a week, mist the inside of your pumpkin with the bleach, 
and then let it dry and then mist it with the uh, the oil and that will help preserve it as long as possible sitting out on the front step. That sounds awesome. Now, what about what about if you've got a light, you know, like an actual candle in the that does the olive oil make it flammable? Well, you obviously don't want to spray it in there while the candle's lit. I mean, that's obvious, right? But uh, once the oil dries on that surface, it's not a problem. You can do it fine. The only other thing I will suggest is if you're someone that feeds that pumpkin to farm animals or something when it's done, don't use the bleach water. <clears throat> you don't want to do that to your animals. No, and, and that's that's another good good point because I have chickens, you know. Right. And I always feed mine to my chickens. Afterwards. Really? Yeah, I, I love it. I didn't know chickens ate pumpkin. They love it. They love it. And I'll take I'll take like the, the whole pumpkin, and for me it's a little bit of fun. You know, I take it and I throw it down the hill and Kablooey. it busts out. And, and they chicken it to death. And they peck it to death, yes. Pecked pumpkin. <laughs> Pecked pumpkin. <laughs> oh, Vicki Martin, hi Vicki, says uh, put the warmer on a timer talking about your candle warmer. That's pretty <clears> smart. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, maximum I like that. safety. And Haley's suggesting pumpkin spice seeds. If huh. you come up with a recipe for that, we want to see it. Post it to, to, to the website. Hmm. Absolutely. You, you might be onto something there. Oh, and I'm looking over at the Oda Bandits page. Pam Meadows talking about her candles again. Says right. She doesn't do candles. She has uh, asthma, and Oda Band is the only cleaner that doesn't <clears> bother <throat> her. I use it everywhere, in the kitchen, bathroom, carpet, laundry, and all in between. We appreciate it, that Pam. And you know, awesome. I've I'm heard glad that, that, from, that helps. I've heard that from some other folks with asthma and lung issues is mm -hmm. that Odoban is something they can use. I always tell people it's very individual. Some people with asthma love it. Some it's a bad reaction for them. So always be careful when you're approaching that. But I have had that before and I'm glad it works for That's you. That's right. That's right. Well, we hope that you guys have gotten some good tips out yeah. of this today and maybe kind of gotten you in the mood for fall to come and Keep an eye out for us, subscribe, like, and look out for those reminders when we're on next week. We hope we will see you again next Thursday. And until then, make, make life, life fresh. fresh. Thanks for listening to The Odo Show, presented by Odo Band. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review and subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. Until next time, make life fresh.